My name is Dr. Yurif Haiken, and I'm a cardiac electrophysiologist at South Sacred Regional Health Center and Pace Cardiology Clinics. Some of our patients have had a heart attack or another condition that led to significant malfunction of the lower chambers of the heart. These patients may need a specialized device called an ICD or an implantable defibrillator. How do we select these patients? Well, we know from a number of studies that patients who have had a cardiac arrest where the heart went into a very rapid life-threatening rhythm which required resuscitation are very likely to do this again. That's one of the populations we treat. Another population is that of patients who have family history of uh, relatives, close relatives, dying suddenly for an unknown reason. Some of these patients have one-off inherited arrhythmogenic cardiac conditions, uh, which may benefit from an ICD. But the largest by far is the group of patients who've had a heart attack at some point in time, which led to deterioration in the heart muscle function. When a patient has poor heart muscle function after a heart attack, they are definitely at risk. We measure heart muscle function as a percent of blood ejected by the lower left uh, chamber every time the heart pumps. A normal heart pumps 60% or greater, or two-thirds of greater of blood in it every time it pumps. When that number falls below 30%, or about half of normal, we know that the patient has enough scar to potentially lead to a cardiac arrest. And we know from studies that some of these patients may benefit from an implantable defibrillator to save their life. Look at it as a life insurance policy. A defibrillator is a device the size of a standard pager, if you recall those devices. The defibrillator is typically implanted under the skin, under the collarbone, with one, two, or three wires uh, going into the vein under the collarbone and into the heart. With one wire typically going to the right upper chamber, one to the right lower chamber, and in some cases, in patients who not only have reduced heart muscle function, but are also suffering from or are at risk for congestive heart failure, a third wire is placed using specialized veins called the coronary sinus on the outside surface of the left lower chamber to allow us to synchronize the lower chambers. This is called cardiac resynchronization therapy and the device is called the biventricular ICD. The device can detect if the heart is going too slow and work as a pacemaker. It can also detect if the heart is going into a life-threatening rapid rhythm, in which case it can deliver either pacing or a shock if necessary to save your life. The risks with placing one of these devices include small risk of bleeding or infection under the skin, small risk of bleeding in the chest or deflating the lung. Generally speaking, the battery of the device can last anywhere from six to 10 years with about eight years on average. We follow patients with defibrillators to a dedicated arrhythmia clinic and know well ahead of time when the battery is about to go down. We schedule the patient to come back and have the battery replaced. It's a very quick procedure. Placing the defibrillator in the first place is about a half an hour procedure. It's about an hour in patients who need a third wire. Replacing the device may only take 15 to 20 minutes.